Hi everybody, this is Steve Grizzetti, co-founder of MoviePix.com and author of the MoviePix.com Guide to Adobe Photoshop Elements. And here we are, Photoshop Elements in part two of our eight-part basic training for Photoshop Elements. At its most simple and basic, the program is a tool for enhancing and improving photos, cleaning up photos, correcting color, that sort of thing. And there are a number of tools here in the program for doing just that. Off to the left in the toolbar, you'll find a number of great tools for doing some spot work or for darkening areas, for lighting areas, for getting rid of things that shouldn't be in the picture. And then at the top of the screen, under the Enhance Manual, you'll find a number of tools and features for just improving the overall color and look of your picture. The top half of the Enhancement Menu are Auto Tools, and these Auto Correction Tools will often do a great job for you. So for instance, if I take this snowy picture and I go to Auto Color Correction, it brightens the snow a little bit, it actually does a nice job of improving the picture. But auto tools are math, they're not art, so quite often automatic doesn't quite do it for you, but they're always worth a try. Most of the automatic tools are also represented in manual tools down here. So these are just automatic versions of the rest of the tools in the enhancement menu. Let's try a different picture. Here's a picture of a Christmas morning not very well lit. The color might be just a little bit off and there are tools we could try to use to improve that. I could probably go to Enhance Auto Smart Fix and that might fix it. It did brighten it up, get rid of some of the shadows. The picture has been sharpened a little bit. That's actually pretty nice, but I'm going to Control Z or Command Z to undo that. We'll go back to what we had and let's try some of the manual tools. Now here in the second set of tools under Enhancement, you'll find tools for adjusting color and adjusting lighting. And of course, the most basic adjustments you can make are to brightness and contrast, aren't they? If we go to Shadow Highlights, this is a great tool if you've got a picture where you maybe had uh, too much contrast. There was bright light around and you took a picture of somebody in the shade, or maybe you took a picture of a bird flying through the air and the bird was dark because the sky was so bright. Watch what Shadow Highlights does to this picture. See, Shadow Highlights brings out the shadows. It decreases the contrast. Now, anytime you use one of these tools, you'll find a preview checkbox here on the tool itself. And preview gives you a way to do a sort of before and after comparison of your work. So this is with shadow highlights applied. And when I uncheck preview, this is the before, this is the after. Shadow highlights often works very, very well in pictures like this where the lighting just isn't quite balanced. I'm going to cancel that though and not apply it. Under color, you'll find a number of tools here for adjusting color, getting rid of some of the cast in a picture. You know, a color cast is wrong or the color temperature is wrong. And we'll play with those in just a moment. But I want to show you one tool that really most people gloss over because they don't quite understand it. Under adjust lighting, the last option here is levels. And levels is primarily a tool for adjusting red, blue, and green levels in a picture. Those are the three colors that combine to color every pixel in every photo that you're going to work on in Photoshop Elements, or well, every color photo anyway. But the nature of this tool is that it also lets you do some really nice adjustments to lighting and to color. Watch this. If I select this little sampler here on the right, this is a set white point sampler. And if I click on that and I go someplace in the picture where there is a white object, say for instance, the white on the top of this stocking hanging by the chimney. When I click on that, watch what happens. It brightens the whole picture and it shifts any color so that all of the color temperatures are set based on this white point. Now there's also a black point set and we can sample that also by clicking on the first eyedropper here on the panel. And I can find a dark spot, say, behind these logs in the fireplace. It may or may not make an adjustment, but setting the black and especially the white point can really change everything in a picture. I'm going to uncheck preview. This is the before. This is the after. So levels are actually the very first place I go when it comes to correcting lighting in a photo. There are lots of other tools for doing it, but Levels often does it. This is a really cool trick, setting the white point and then having all the colors shift to match that white point. Let's cancel that. I want to go to another photo here. And here we've got a little boy sitting at a table, cute picture of him cramming cookies into his mouth. But 
We had a problem, which was that although there was fluorescent lighting in the room, giving him kind of an orange cast, we also had lighting coming in the window, giving him kind of a blue cast. It was two different color temperatures at work. How can we correct this picture? Well, we could play with some of these adjustments here, maybe adjust the hue and shift that or remove the color cast. But one of my favorite tools for correcting this kind of situation is adjust color for skin tone. And if you select that, you get a sampler and all we need to do is just sample his skin. And you can see that brought out the red in his face. It brought out the orange in his hair. It kind of shifted everything. I can uncheck preview. There's the before, there's the after. That did some really nice things to this picture. I can adjust it to make him look more tan or more blush, bring out the red in his face. I can even adjust the color temperature if I don't like the automatic setting, but I think that's a really good job there. What I would do if I were improving this picture is first I would apply this adjust color for skin tone and then I would go to the enhance menu and select the option to apply shadow highlights to bring out some of the darker places. We may adjust mid-tone contrast a little bit to make it just a little sharper and I think that's a really nice picture. Compared to what we started with we've got a really good picture with some nice color tone to it. So lots of great tools in here just for making your pictures look fantastic. A lot of them are here under the Enhance menu. Explore them, play with them. My book will show you what each one of them does. And chances are using these tools, you can rescue about any picture that for some reason, the color or the lighting wasn't quite right. And that's it for part two. Hope you join us for part three as we continue to explore the many cool tools available in Photoshop Elements for improving your photos and for creating graphics. Hope you'll join me for part three.